Hello everyone, Rebelcoder here. Today we are going to continue our work on DNA Toolkit. Last time we left off on these two functions. One of them was validating the sequence and the other one was counting nucleotides. And we used this function as well to solve one of the problems on Rosalind. So today we are going to add two more functions to our DNA Toolkit. And those functions will replicate a real biological function. Let me switch to the browser so I can show you what we are going to work on today. So two steps are transcription and translation. We have been working with a single DNA string, DNA sequence, but we did not generate a DNA reverse complement. So we're going to implement this function today to generate this other missing part. And then we're going to implement a function that generates RNA from our DNA. And of course, we're going to go into translation in our upcoming videos. So let me show you a couple more images here. So here we have a DNA. Again, we only work with one part. We're going to generate a second part. And then we're going to use transcription to get an RNA from our DNA string. Okay? So again, we're going to implement step one and step two. I'm going to link these images in the description as well. So let's go back to our code. So again, that's where we left off. Let's just run it again and see if it works. Okay, it still does work. So we're going to create our first function here. Let me copy that from my snippets. We're going to go back to DNA Toolkit. So next function is going to be transcription. So you probably know what transcription is. It's the process where DNA is transcribed into RNA to be used to create proteins from codons. But again, we're going to look into that in our next upcoming videos. So here, the only thing we do is we take the sequence of DNA and we're replacing T thymine with U uracil. So let's go back to our code here and actually try running this very small and simple function, but it is a very powerful biological process. So let's try printing out the result of this function which is called transcription. We can see that it is in our DNA toolkit. That's why it's auto-completed. And we're going to pass a DNA string to it. The one we generated before. So now we're going to run it. Okay, so now we can see two outputs, which is counting nucleotides and then RNA string that has been generated from our DNA string. So for the example's sake, we're going to annotate all of the output, so it is much easier to read and understand what is actually happening on every step. So let me copy and paste some of that stuff from my notes here. So let's try printing out our results in very readable and easy to understand manner. So let me try running this here. And as you can see, we can see the sequence that we generated right here. That's a 50 nucleotide long sequence. And of course, we can see that the length is 50. Nucleotide frequency is here too. Okay, so we have all original three steps annotated. Let's add our new step that we just added a function for. It is going to be DNA to RNA transcription. And let's try running this here too. Okay, so now we have a clear step-by-step -step execution. This will matter in the future because we're going to combine a lot of different functions to actually get our last final result. Example would be where we have a DNA string, it has to be converted to RNA, then we are going to try looking for codons and then match them with amino acids to build an amino acid sequence that is a protein. So step-by-step -step output is very important in this case, as we will see in our future videos, okay? So we can see that this actually works and the easiest way to understand if it works it should match this string exactly, but instead of thymine, we're going to have uracil, okay? So it's C-A-C-G-A-T, and after A, we have W, and we have double T here. So this is a very simple function, and it works. So now we're going to implement our second function, which is a reverse complement function. For this function, we're going to use a dictionary of complement nucleotides, this one here. So let me explain why would we need that. It is the easiest and the fastest way to actually swap the characters. So we're going to pass a DNA string to our function and it's going to see if it's A, we're going to swap it with T. If it's T, we're going to swap it with A. So let's look at this image and this is the biological process we're trying to replicate in code, which is reverse complement. If we're going to find in our original string A, we're going to swap it with T. If we find T, we'll swap it with A and so forth. 
Okay, let's go back to the editor. So let's implement our function. I'm going to copy and paste that from my snippets here. Okay, so here's the function. The only thing we do here is we loop through our sequence that we pass to this function and then we reverse it. So in this part right here, we are using list comprehension again and we are giving it a DNA sequence that we pass to this function. It is going to loop character by character and then let's say first character nucleotide is A. It is going to go into that dictionary, pass A to it and look at this thing right here. If we pass A, we're going to get T back. Let's say we're passing G. Let's say next nucleotide is G. We are going into our dictionary with G and G returns C. And this way we're swapping characters. The other interesting part right here is this. This is the Python way of basically reversing the string. Just to give you a quick refresher, let's see how it works if you're not sure. So let's do a temporary string and test, okay? If we're going to print this string right now, we're going to see test. Let's do the reverse and run it again. It's T-S-E-T. -E so this is how it works. So the only thing this function does, it loops through the DNA string that we give it and it matches that with complement nucleotides from this dictionary. Okay, so let's do a quick test and then we can make it a nice output as well. We're going to print out reverse complement and we're going to give it our DNA string here. Let's see what we get. Okay, so this is the output, so we can actually check it very easy. It's T here and it's A here and we know that a is swapped with T and T is swapped with A and then it's reversed. Okay, so this actually works. I have created a very nice way to output this to kind of simulate a DNA pattern. Let me copy and paste that from my snippets. Let's run it here. And as you can see, I've also added a notation of 5 prime end to 3 prime end and 3 prime end to 5 prime end. And this is sort of a, a connection between nucleotides. So this way we can actually see what is going on step by step. We have one, two, three, four steps. And we know what's happening at every single step in our case. Because we're going to be adding so much more functionality to our DNA toolkit, it is a very good idea to split that into multiple files. So we're going to create a file called sequences.py right here. Let me create a new file. And we're going to move all of our sequences here. We're going to have a lot of different ones. We're going to have protein, RNA, DNA codon sequences. So it is a good idea to keep them in a separate file. Okay. So now let's import that. Structures. Import everything. Just to make sure it still works. Let's go back here and run our code. Okay, as we can see, it generates a random string every time. So it's very nice to see, you know, different strings every time we run. And of course, it is going to look much more interesting when we apply our code to a real genome and we find real proteins, real sequences in the future. Okay, so now we have an extra file here, structures. We're going to populate this file with a lot of different structures in the future. Now, we implemented two new functions. We tested that they work. One other thing I wanted to add is it is a very good idea to use a good code editor that will do auto completion for you. It will give you extra information about the functions that you use and leaving a good comments is a very good approach too. So let's say we switch to this main file here and we have these functions that we used transcription, for example, if I just point at it, it just says transcription here. It just says reverse complement. What we can actually do, we can add a doc strings to that. These functions are not very complicated. So, you know, translation or transcription or reverse complement, the names of the functions tell you exactly what they do, but we can always add extra information. Okay. So let's do this. This is how you define a doc string. Let's save this file now and let's go back to our main file here and let's point at this function right now. This is much nicer. It says transcription. That's the name of the function. It accepts sequence. And this is what it does. It translates DNA to RNA and it replaces thymine with uracil. So leaving comments like that in your code, especially 
if your functions are very complex is a very good idea. Let's actually do the same thing for our next function. We're going to add our doc string here. And let's go back to our code here and point at it. Okay, so we're swapping adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine and reversing newly generated string. Okay, so let's make sure it still runs just fine. We have this very nice clean output. We know exactly what we're doing at every single step. One extra thing I want to add to this video. It is not really bioinformatics related. It's more like a Python-y thing if you want to practice your Python. If we're going to go back to the browser here, we can see that most of the images display nucleotides in color. So maybe we can implement a small function that we can pass our DNA sequence or the output of the function and it will color nucleotides for us. It is not a very necessary thing, but it might be useful if you want to create a presentation of your output. Okay, and this is very easy to do in the Python as well. Let's go back to our code and let's create another file that we're going to populate in the future as well. It is going to be called utilities.py. So in this file, we're going to add a lot of functionality like reading from files, writing to files, reading from databases, checking if we can read or write files as well. But now we're going to add this small function, which is called colored that I've created. Okay. So all this function does, it receives a string of text. It loops through that string and just looks at the character by character. If it's A, then we're going to return this, which is a color. I think it's red, actually. A is red. And then it adds color plus the nucleotide as a text. So if you're interested in colorized output for some reason, I will leave a link in the description as well. This is a very nice page, colorized terminal output in Python. So you can kind of go through that and see how you can very nicely colorize your output. There's a lot of complex things you can do uh, with the background color, foreground color, different fonts and things like that. Okay, let's go back to our code and see if we can pass one of our output strings to this function colored. Okay, so let's go back to our main. So now we're going to need to import colored function from utilities module we just created. Okay, okay, so let's try getting one of our output strings colorized. One thing you will notice that the output of your editor might not support that format. So let's do let's do colored for our DNA sequence here and let's run it in the output of this editor. As you can see it has a lot of kind of garbage in here. That is because we've added all of these extra things to it to make it colorized. So you have to run this code in the terminal a separate terminal or built-in terminal into your editor. I'm using Visual Studio, so if I go control tilde, the terminal will open up instead of the original output that we seen before. So terminal right here, let's run it by hand. Python and our file is called main.py. Okay, so nice, it works. We can see that our sequence is colorized. Let's try adding this colorization to our nucleotide frequency, to RNA and to our DNA with its reverse complement. Okay, so if we're going to try this, it is not going to work. Let's try running it. And you can see that nucleotide frequency was a dictionary with values and keys. And now it's just ACGT. It is because our count nucleotide frequency returns a dictionary, but we're trying to colorize a string. So instead of using colorized here, we're gonna do a little bit of a weird thing but we're going to do this. We're going to pass the whole string to it again. Let's try running it. Let me clean the screen here. And now it is printing out exactly as it should. Very nice. Okay, let's add the same thing to our reverse complement here. Colored, okay. And we're going to add that to a transcription here as well. Because again, it is returning a string, so we can colorize that string. And we need to do that same thing for reverse complement here too. Again, it's not a very necessary thing, but if you want to use this colorized function for some of the output, you can of course use that. Let's try running it. So I ran it in the output again by accident, and you can see all of the garbage that is printed out. Let's go back to our terminal. Let's clean the screen, the output, and run it again. And here we have a very nice and beautiful kind of cartoony output, I have to say. Okay, everyone, 
this is it for today. We have added two more functions to our code, and both of them do replicate a real biological function, like transcription here and our reverse complement right here. In our upcoming videos, we are going to go even further than that. We're going to add codon functions and protein search functions. It's going to be a lot of fun, I hope. And thank you very much for watching and listening. So this code is going to be available on GitLab. So you can go there and, for example, grab that colorized function. It's not really bioinformatics related stuff, so you don't have to figure out how it's written unless you're interested in. Or you can just pull down the latest version or copy that from the file. I will leave a link in the description too and just use it. If you have any questions about this video, please leave them in a the comment section below or just pop in into Telegram or Matrix chat. We have more and more people joining every day. This video will also be available on library platform at the same time. Thank you very much again for listening. Rebel Coder, signing out.